Hello everyone. Um, it is a election night, but um, <clears throat> due to how many uh, people actually liked my uh, video where I showed off the most disturbing films that I had, um, I thought I would go into the uh, the band 72 Nasties. Now, I will warn you guys, this is going to be a lengthy video. Remember, these are 72 movies that were banned by England. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, just a heads up, you know, grab some popcorn or whatever. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's get, let's get down to it here. Um, these are not going to be in alphabetical order. Um, they're not going to be by, uh, you know, rather they're uh, like the, the rape and revenge films or, you know, uh, I have some that are considered uh, Nazi exploitation films. Uh, just a heads up, you know, if anybody's sensitive to that kind of thing. Um, so... But, uh, yeah. So what are the nasties? Um, well, I'd like to point out that this was actually not the only list. Um, there's actually two other lists. And the lists that we are going through are the 72 banned ones. They're the first list. They're like the definitive, uh, these are the really bad ones, essentially. Uh, the other ones are kind of uh, secondary, not not as bad, but they were um, they were still pulled, but they weren't considered the worst of the worst. Um, you might recall in my last video, uh, I spoke about how England was going through a moral panic at the time. Um, they didn't like uh, that people were renting these movies. Uh, movie rentals were really big um in the 80s of course because the VH, the vcr just came out and uh so <clears throat> in thatcher's england um there was a lot of uh attack on uh certain movies and the movies that were um looked at the most were of course the horror genre uh, anything that had to do with uh, slashers and uh, any type of violence was uh, scrutinized. Um, and uh, the 80s all over the world was going through moral panics. It wasn't just uh, England, it wasn't just the United States. Um, <clears throat> of course, I've done videos on the Satanic Panic, like the books that I have from that. Um, that's like the most infamous of like what happened over here as far as the moral panic issue goes. Um, it was mostly Satanism and the occult. Not really uh, movies so much. Um, <clears throat> more than anything, rock music um, and Dungeons and Dragons were uh, the target over here. But in England, uh, movies were the target. So. I am going to leave um, a few links in the description box like last time. Um, probably some trailers, uh, whatever I can find. Um, <clears throat> uh, Lampy Man did a few good uh, videos. I'm probably going to link some of his stuff. Because um, he did this really good one about Mondo films and Mondo films are like the precursor to uh, films that you got with like uh, Cannibal Holocaust and Faces of Death. Basically all came from the Mondo cane genre. Um, and what is the Mondo film? Uh, the Mondo film is basically kind of a, a mock documentary in a way that uh, purposely puts uh, 
people, animals, and violent situations in order to film it in a more exploitative type of light. Um, the film Mondo Kane, for example, um, is actually available on YouTube uh, for free. Um, <clears throat> so, but that was like the precursor to a lot of the movies that we're going to be going over. Um, and yes, Faces of Death was actually on this, this list. I actually used to own a copy of Faces of Death. Um, I don't anymore. Um, I'm actually missing some of these movies, but I have most of them. Um, Faces of Death, I feel everybody should see that movie at least once in their life. Um, it is available on YouTube, I believe. Uh, free, so I can leave a link. Um, <clears throat> in the description box. But everybody should view it at least once. Um, so yeah, let's let's just uh, begin. Um, I'm going to start off with Last House on the left here. Um, this is the original Wes Craven film. This is his first movie. Uh, this is my favorite Wes Craven film. This is before uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and Scream, all those other movies they did. And this movie actually shocked him to the core so much that he said he never wanted to make another realistic film like this again. Um, and uh, obviously that's why he went into like more of the fantasy type of realm with like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, this, this film is uh, just amazing. It really is. And uh, this is the uncut version. Um, this is like a really early uh, MGM release of it. Um, the uncut version is available still. So this is it. You know, it's not out of print or anything. But um, But, uh, I mean, I, I have nothing but good things to say about this movie, honestly. This is a, my cats are acting up. Um, this is just like an amazing film. Basically everything down to, uh, there's a, a scene, graphic scene, where, uh, her friend uh, has has her uh, intestines being pulled out. Um, basically, I, I mean, he went all out on this. Uh, David Hess um, is an actor that I really uh, I love his movies. Um, he was a folk singer too, uh, and uh, of course he's no longer with us. But um, His, his performance in this is just very uh, memorable. I mean, as a psychotic killer that escapes ruthlessly, uh, causing his son to become addicted to heroin so that he could control him and all that. Um, if you guys have not seen this movie, you absolutely need to see this. Um, and this isn't going to be the only film that he's actually in. Uh, there's another movie on this list um, that he's going to be mentioned, um, where he plays, he, he kind of goes through the same role, um, basically a psychotic killer. Um, <clears throat> it's also another rape and revenge film. But this film basically started it all as far as the rape and revenge movies. Um, this is kind of like the first that's going to be mentioned. There's, there's like at least, I want to say three are going to appear on this list. Um, so, three or four of them. But this is this is where um, films like uh, Night Train Murders, um, which was basically a Italian movie uh, kind of rip off of this, um, which um, I, I mean the. <laughs> Basically, the the uh, the violence happens on a train, um, but I'll get into that. Um, 
and then I spit on your grave movies like that uh, basically would not have happened if it wasn't for this movie this is the movie that started it all everyone you know so yeah this this is a very very good film um, the remake was horrible uh, it was crap <laughs> don't watch the remake uh, I'm sorry if you've seen it already uh, but definitely see this one so yeah um, the other thing too this movie created such a panic when it came out in the United States even that uh, they used to they used to hand out barf bags for this movie um, and um, they used to tell everybody like don't panic it's only a movie it's only a movie you know so I'll, I'll have to like show you some of these advertisements and stuff for this because it's amazing um, but that's how realistic people believe this was I mean this this movie impacted even American audiences um, it was just never banned in this country like it was in England um, but anyway, came out in 1972, uh, Last House on the Left, amazing film. Twitch of the Deaf Nerve. Um, this film is basically uh, created by uh, Mario Baba. Um, it's it's kind of gothic. It's um, it's basically a conflict between uh, somebody who is more scientifically minded and somebody who's trying to protect the environment. And also a battle uh, over the land, too. Um, basically, rich families fighting with each other. But one scene really will stick out to anybody who has ever seen the first uh, Friday the 13th film. There's a scene where two teenagers are... Uh, having sex and they're speared through the back uh, and they both die of course this this was actually um, also done in um, Friday the 13th the original Friday the 13th film so um, it is believed that that actually may have um, this movie might have actually been a major um, influence on the Friday the 13th series um, but this came out in 1971. Um, it's got some pretty good kills in it. Uh, so, um, it's not really my favorite, but, um, you know, just basically rich, rich pigs killing each other off over some land and, uh, other stuff. So, and just some teenagers just happened to get in the middle of the crossfire and ended up uh, dead as well. So, but uh, <clears throat> I will definitely leave a trailer in the description box. Cannibal Apocalypse. Now this film is great. Um, this film is basically um, about some uh, war veterans that uh, come home from Vietnam and uh, they, um, they tasted human flesh basically while they were held captive in Vietnam. And um, John Saxon's in it. Um, it's kind of, he's been in a few um, cult films in the in America. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, some of the stuff that's in this film. Um, kills are of course, you know, pretty uh, graphic. It's it's the kind of like a, a zombie film, only it's cannibals basically and what happens is um, it's very unique in that it shows uh, when they bite other people that other person turns into a cannibal so like I said it's almost like one of those virus films or a zombie film 
Um, so it is, it is a pretty cool film. Um, and, uh, and, uh, there's quite a few, um, yeah, Giovanni Lombardo. Giovanni Lombardo is, um, an actor that is in quite a few Italian horror movies. Um, he's also in, uh, let's see, he's in Cannibal Ferox. Um, I don't have that film, but he's in quite a few. Um, he's, uh, he's also in, uh, House on the Edge of the Park, which, um, I will be talking about, um, <clears throat> So yeah, this this is a pretty uh, good film. Um, of course, I will be leaving a uh, trailer in the description box. Eaten alive. Uh, this film is occasionally shown on television around Halloween time. Um, it is uh, Toby Hooper's film, uh, the guy that made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Fun House, which actually appears, uh, interestingly enough, on this list. I don't know why <laughs> Fun House is on this list, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre isn't. Um, basically, it's about a guy that has a pet crocodile. He's a crazy Vietnam vet, and... Uh, kills people that um, end up staying at his, his crappy hotel out in the boonies in the south somewhere in Texas. Um, and uh, quite, quite a few um, interesting things happen in the film. Um, Robert England um, is actually, uh, in this film. He's the guy that plays Freddy Krueger in Nightmare on Elm Street, so this is actually one of his, uh, early appearances on screen. Uh, and, um, there's another film, actually, that, um, I'm going to be discussing on this list that also has him in it. So... Snuff. What can I say about this? So, a film that could only be made in South America where life is cheap. Here's the thing about this film. Um... So, this film has kind of an interesting uh, take on uh, sort of a Charlie Manson type of cult uh, that goes around and kills people for a cult member, a uh, cult leader named Satan, basically. Um, but the main catch of the film is if you sit through all of that, there's a murder at the end of the film that is supposed to be real. And, uh, it's, so this film, this film actually got, you know, the reason why it's called Snuff is because the murder at the end is supposed to be real. So you sit through a film, basically, that really, uh, has nothing to do with the ending, but just to see the ending because you think the murder is going to be real. I think you understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> the whole thing's just kind of a... Uh, cop out in a way. Um, but it's, um, it's not a bad film. It's, it's just kind of weird in a way. Um, I mean, yeah, the murder scene looks kind of realistic, but, um, in this day and age, it's probably fake too compared to what they can do nowadays with it. Um, but, 
Yeah, oh. Lampy Man did an excellent uh, review on this movie. I'll probably show you that link. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say about it. Um, I mean, it's... It'll keep you entertained, but it's not... Um, it's not really that gruesome. It's it's only the ending scene that makes it gruesome, honestly. The burning. Not the only burning that will be on this list. Um, this is an American movie that came out in 1981. Um, it's basically uh, about a badly burned uh, man that comes back to a camp uh, where he used to work to get revenge, uh, basically. It's pretty graphic, uh, gruesome, I, I think. Um, I mean, it, this is a great fit. It's a great film. It really is. Um, if you haven't seen it, I mean, you absolutely have to see this movie. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave the trailer. I just watched this one recently. House on Straw Hill, also known as Trauma. Um, this is a completely uncensored first time ever. This is actually a British movie, interestingly enough. Um, ended up being banned course. And this particular copy has a documentary on it. Look at that. Ban the Sadist Films. So, um, it's it's a pretty good film. It's it's got a lot of sex, a lot of sleaze in it. Um, it's definitely. I mean, if you want to see a lot of uh, ass and all that other stuff in it, it this is a great film. Uh, <laughs> it definitely is. Um, seriously though, it it is uh, <clears throat> it is pretty sleazy. Um, it it features uh, features a little bit of lesbian features, you know, all kinds of stuff, but. Besides that, I mean, the murder scenes are pretty good, too. Um, so, I, I can't, you know, it because of YouTube, you know, and the censorship and all that, it's really hard for me to go into a lot of stuff in great detail. But uh, if you're into that kind of thing, you'll definitely like this. So... Horrible, aka absurd. Um, basically, this is uh, a lot of people um, advertise this when it uh, first came out on VHS as kind of Anthropophagus uh, Part 2. Um, it's a completely different movie from Anthropophagus, but it has uh, the same actor that plays the killer in Anthropophagus, uh, which I will be talking about as well. Um, basically, it's it's about a guy, he's like this uh, experimented on individual, he's superhuman, he regenerates quickly, and uh, he goes to this, this family's house and attacks them, and, um, but it's, it's a pretty good film, it really... Um, it's pretty graphic, of course. And we have a movie that's not exactly a horror movie, but it is in that cannibal genre. And this is uh, also known as Man from Deep River, uh, Sacrifice. This is uh, Umberto Lindsay's first film uh, before he did um, Cannibal Ferox, and like Cannibal Ferox, this features animal death. Uh, not as bad as Cannibal Ferox, um, 
in my opinion, but um, it is actually a very uh, beautiful story um, in a weird way. It's, it's kind of about this guy who ends up, um, I think it's, God, where's it? Thai, Thailand or Indonesia or something? Or let's see. Survival is shocker. Yeah, so he ends up with um, some natives, and um, you know, he kind of at, at first they don't like him because he's uh, he's white and he's a fit in, and you know. Um, after tormenting him a few times, they decide to like actually accept him, and he ends up uh, marrying a woman in the village. And um, but it's, I mean, story-wise, it is really a good movie. Um, it's just, you know, of course, you got um, a lot of like violence, you know, uh, towards animals and. Uh, <clears throat> You know, some of the cannibal scenes might be disturbing to some people, but not not really. I mean, not so much cannibalism actually. It's more, it's more just like animal deaths. Um, but yeah, it's it is pretty, um, it is pretty good film. Um, so I like it. Um, I mean, I. <laughs> I mean, this director's kind of done a lot of disgusting things, in my opinion, but, um, you know, other than, I mean, putting the, the animal violence aside, I mean, it is a pretty good film. So, um, you know, <clears throat> if you like films like uh, Cannibal Holocaust, uh, you might actually like this movie. Um, this came out before it believe. Yeah. Um, so, it's certainly a lot better than uh, Cannibal Fair Rocks. Cannibal Fair Rocks uh, was basically his uh, trying to one-up uh, Cannibal Holocaust by upping not only uh, animal violence but uh, the kill scenes as well. Um, but the story suffered significantly during it. Um, <clears throat> well, it was, well, it has an interesting uh, story as far as like a drug dealer goes and all that, uh, getting involved in the jungles. Um, it, it's nothing like Cannibal Holocaust and you can't really replicate a masterpiece by <laughs> trying to one-up somebody, um, which is what he was trying to do basically. Uh, rather than come out with his own movie, his own idea, but this is this is his idea definitely, and um, it's it's more original than uh, the Cannibal Ferox one. I spit on your grave. By now, with all of the remakes, uh, all of the the uh, the weird, um, I I think there's like sequel now or something. It, there's quite a few of them now. Uh, everybody should have seen the original one, aka Day of the Woman. Um, way better than the remake. Spectacular. Um, definitely more realistic. Uh, visually more graphic as far as the rape scene goes. Um, the remake kind of toned it down a little bit. Um, in favor of more of the uh, the murder scenes being more graphic as opposed to what was done to her. Uh, the original tends to um, home in on, on some of that graphicness that's done to her. Um, again, I can't really go into it that much. But uh, <clears throat> suffice to say, it is a great movie. Um, it's a classic. And, um, yeah, the, this is like the first DVD of it, I think. Um, so, again, I can leave a, a trailer description box. Uh, 
this is one of my favorites. This is the other burning film. Um, it's called uh, Don't Go in the House, but it was also known as The Burning um, while on VHS. So this is part of the Don't series. You're going to see quite a few of them. Um, Don't Go in the Woods Alone. Don't Look in the Basement. Um, there's quite a few of them on this list, basically. Um, they're kind of known as the Don't films. Um, <clears throat> And this is this is going to be the first one that uh, we're going to look at. Um, obviously, the cover of that is pretty badass. Um, but basically, it's about a loner who um, a lot of people compare it to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho in a weird way. Um, I don't really see the comparison just because he lives with his mother and his mother passes away and he decides to uh, kind of um, go all crazy and uh, you know there there might be some similarities but it's I don't think there's that much of a similarity between this and Psycho. Um, it is a good film though. Um, it's, it's pretty gruesome. I mean, Donnie, he picks up women, he puts them in a uh, fire uh, safe room and blow torches them to death, basically, um, while wearing a fire safe hazmat suit. <laughs> that basically sums it up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's pretty sadistic. Um, so... So, Hell of the Living Dead, um, Italian Gross Fast, basically, um, kind of like Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, whatever, um, to tell you the truth, I think this is probably like one of the best zombie films, um, I think it's better than, uh, Night of the Living Dead, I, um, I, I mean, <laughs> It's, it's pretty gross, um, some of the scenes that you'll see in this, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend this one, um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty gross, pretty gruesome. Um, my favorite zombie movies, though, I have to say, are probably, uh, Lucio Folge's films, um, which one of his, uh, well, two of his films are going to be on this list. Uh, oh, three actually. Yeah. So, I'm going to be getting to him. Unhinged. Now, this film is uh, kind of a uh, big uh, trans transgender um, slasher type of film basically that kind of came out. Um, it's not made evident of course at first but one of the characters is a trans woman um, and um, it's I mean it's probably not the best film but it's good enough that um, it, it really makes for an interesting slasher um, <clears throat> and it's got quite a twist at the end and um, and uh, of course it's never been on blu-ray so uh, you know but it's it's a good film for the most part man um, I'll definitely be, uh, leaving a trailer in the description box for you guys. Um, there is a channel I was watching, um, where the reviewer, uh, does trans horror. Um, they did a video and they talked about Unhinged, um, as well as Sleepaway Camp, some of the other ones. 
so this is definitely like one of those early ones that's in that that vein in a way. And Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. Now, I love this film a lot. A lot. And I actually, um, when I was in New Orleans, I actually shot some uh, filming locations while I was there. Um, I never posted it, though. Um, I think I lost some of that footage, to tell you the truth. Um, but I went to the house that was uh, used for the hotel in the film and everything. Um, and it's just, a, it's, it's amazing. Um, I mean, I saw that whole area. Um, in uh, the New Orleans area there. Um, and uh, this, I mean, this got to be one of my favorite films. Um, and it's part of that, that Hellgate series. Um, he did, he did like at least two movies and that kind of thing. Um, he did one called City of the Living Dead, which did not make it on this list. Um, but it's pretty gruesome and graphic. Um, and this is like the second one that came out. For some reason, this one made it on the list, but the other one didn't. And basically, the hotel that the movie takes place in is turns out to be one of the gates to hell. Uh, so there's... Um, beings uh, from hell come back and um, you know now you have zombies walking around um, so yeah it's it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty cool film um, I highly recommend it um, it's got a lot of that that whole supernatural thing going on and stuff uh, you know yeah Definitely, uh, definitely a big one. And, um, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description box for a trailer. Because it's, it's definitely a good one. Um, like I said, um, you definitely, you definitely want to check out the city one. Uh, if you check this one out. I think they're both on YouTube, actually. Um. Or one of them might be available or something. Uh, 2B might even have them. Who knows. Um, but yeah, they're pretty good films. And then here's another one. Uh, this is Zombie. We are going to eat you by Lucio Fulci. And, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a zombie film, and, uh, yeah. It's, uh, pretty good. If, that's, if this is your kind of thing, it's good. Personally, I like City of the Living Dead a lot better, and Beyond a lot better. Um, you know, this, this is just, uh, oh, you know. Zombies killing people, basically. Okay, and we have our second Rape and Revenge film on this list. Night Train Murders. Night Train Murders is probably the film that is going to be the most like Last House on the Left on this list. This is, uh, excuse me, this is the third Rape and Revenge film because we did, uh, I Spit on Your Grave. So this is the third one. Um, this is going to be, uh, I mean, there's, there's even a woman criminal and it's just like, uh, Last House on the Left and all that. Uh, there's a doctor in this, the, one of the girl's, uh, father is a doctor just like Last House on the Left. Um, one of the criminals is a junkie, just like Last House on the left. Um, but this time it's on, it's on a train, 
basically. Uh, there are two students coming home for the holidays and they never make it home because uh, these criminals on a train um, attack them and I don't think I need to go into that much detail about it but uh, long story short basically uh, they end up dead and the criminals uh, end up at the uh, one of the the kids homes basically and there's a whole revenge factor that comes in just like last house of the left where the parents decide to get revenge um, so yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty disturbing um, it's it's a good film I mean it's but the fact that it just rips off Last House on the Left so much is hilarious. No way. Um, so. And of course it says on here, more reprehensible than Last House on the Left. Yeah. Well, they're, they're both good films. I mean, I like it, so... Human experiments. Check out that cover. A doctor basically decides to uh, take all these women and put them uh, in these cells and he studies them. And uh, this is quite an interesting film, actually, I have to say. Um, I I can leave a trailer in the description box, but basically it's a um, I mean it's a correctional facility that um, a psychiatrist is basically um, running. <clears throat> so he's using it to do experiments on uh, people and. Uh, particularly women, and uh, it gets pretty intense. So I don't know why there's so much hair on this. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty cool film. Um, so. I should probably just let everybody know that the reason why I own these films is because I like them. <laughs> so. Island of Death. The world's most widely banned movie. Um, the movie that the censors don't want you to see. Island of Death, um, I think got a Blu-ray release fairly recently. Um, but yeah, the, this film has everything in it. I mean, it, it breaks every taboo in the book. Um, it's got bestiality, I kid you not. It's got... Jerry. It's got rape, murder, torture, uh incest even um you know the the main characters are a brother and a sister who are also lovers i, I mean it this this movie <laughs> when this movie was made it's obvious the director was trying to get every single taboo thing that he could put in this film. Um, this film is about as un-PC as it gets. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's pretty sick. It, it's got everything in it. Um, you know, it's, it's got, uh, I can't 
<laughs> I can't really go into too much, but I'll leave a uh, trailer and, you know, let you guys kind of fill in the blank, basically. Um, <laughs> I mean, everything in the book that is bad is in this movie. <laughs> so, great film, though. Island of Death. I highly recommend it. Devil Hunter, Jesse Franco's uh, movie, um, you know, his movies are, are probably, uh, um, look, when you watch Jesse Franco, you're not going to see a masterpiece. His films are so bad that they're good, kind of a thing. Um, it just so happens that this movie features a, uh, a demonic cannibal. It looks like a, a kind of mutated uh, black guy with white eyes or something that follows him around. I mean, this is, this is basically what it looks like right here. Right here. Okay, so you have this this thing um, that's like following them around, and he's like a cannibal, and he's eating people, and um, it's just uh, you know it is what it is. I mean, it's it's like a it's it's kind of his um, it's his jungle. It's it's part of his cannibal. Uh, after Cannibal Holocaust, there were a lot of clones, and, you know, I, cannibalism was really big in the early 80s, uh, as far as, like, the, the horror film genre. So this is his take on the cannibal genre, basically. Um, and, I, I mean, some of the... It, it, some of it's just, like, so ridiculous. I mean, you... <laughs> I mean, it's more funny than horrifying sometimes. Um, but Jesse Franco um, started out as a porn filmmaker, basically. Um, he got into the horror genre um, in the 80s more. And, um, you know, his films are just over-the-top kind of ridiculous. Um, he also did Bloody Moon, which, which will also... Uh, be on this list, <laughs> um, but essentially his films are just kind of verging on the ridiculous to the point where, yeah, they're kind of hilarious. Um, so. <sighs> yeah, speaking of Bloody Moon, uh, this is his other one. Um, this is a uh, slasher that he made um, in the early 80s. Uh, the uh, <laughs> Speaking of uh, brother and sister, um, brother and sister are involved in a murder, basically, in this film. Uh, takes place on a college campus. You know, the body count uh, kind of you know, um, it just teeters on the ridiculous after a while, but, um, it's, you know, it is what it is, I mean, there's, there's kind of some really annoying things, you know, special effects are, uh, you know, down to it's obvious when a mannequin's head gets cut off, you know, because you can tell it's a mannequin or something. But, um, Lampy Man did excellent reviews on these Jesse Franco films. And I might just leave you, um, a link, you know, to his, uh, film reviews when it comes to these. Because he explains, uh, you know, that this is kind of something that you have to <laughs> put up with when you watch his movies, basically, is they're done so poorly that, um, <laughs> They're just sort of like cheesy beyond reason. Um, but, um, 
you know, but they're also like so bad that they're good kind of a thing too. So, I mean, it's pretty gruesome, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Killer Nun from the Secret Files of the Vatican. Now, no nasties list would be complete without a non exploitation film. Let's face it. Pretty good one. Uh, I like it. Um, uncut, uncensored, unholy. Basically, none killing people. And there's a nun that's also addicted to drugs uh, in this film. She's a junkie and she needs a fix. Um, yeah, I can leave a trailer. She also puts on uh, civilian clothes and uh, fools around too. It's not very nun like. And I watched this movie. I love this movie, Evil Speak. I watched it recently. Clint Howard. Uh, Clint Howard has been in numerous uh, American cult films, including uh, Rock and Roll High School, you know, the film about the Ramones, basically. Um, this is one of his notorious horror movies. Um, I uh, I have to say um, it's a really good film. It's basically about an outcast kid who is um, in a military academy who gets picked on brutally uh, by both uh, teachers and students. And he uh, conjures up Satan and basically takes revenge. Um, there's a Spanish monk that uh, founded the chapel that's at his school, uh, which happens to be in California. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, features everything from like demonic pigs attacking and eating people, uh, you know, because pigs will kill and eat people. That is a fact. Um, and, uh, so, uh, if you're vegan, you might like this movie, actually. Um, <laughs> it gives me pleasure, for sure, seeing pigs killing and eating people. Um, I love it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, the whole satanic aspect's pretty cool. I mean, doing a black mass of a um, old DOS computer is pretty awesome. You know, those of us who remember DOS, the disk operating system, where you could just type in things on a computer and, you know, brings back a lot of nostalgia when you watch something like this. Uh, but anyway, yes, this is a pretty awesome book, uh, not book, movie. And uh, as you can see, my cover is actually uh, the old VHS that I used to have. I used to have this on VHS. And uh, before selling it, I uh, scanned the uh, cover and uh, stuck it in the DVD. So it's got this badass cover on it. Um, but yeah, it's now it's now out on Blu-ray, I believe. Um, and Anton LaVey really liked this movie too. Um, so. But yeah, it's a pretty good film. Oh, here's the alien ripoff. Contamination. This is the Italian ripoff of the movie Alien. And uh, some of the scenes are so much like Alien, uh, it's pretty laughable, actually. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, this is, uh, 
This is pretty gut busting. I mean, literally, it is. You're watching people uh, pick up uh, explosive eggs and uh, explode. And uh, yeah, a lot of guts flying out of people and stuff. There's not a whole lot to this movie, really. It's just basically about a guy that, uh, you know, recounts his time on Mars. And, and these, egg, these eggs, these, these uh, alien eggs that explode, uh, causing people to explode around them. And that's, that's basically all it is. It's just a bunch of gore and explosions. <laughs> but uh, it's still pretty fun. So...